So normally with these videos, I have to worry about something called audience retention, which means I need to make sure that you, the viewer, make it all the way through the end of the video, because that way my videos get recommended more stuff like this. But something tells me this tutorial is different. I don't need to worry about it because we're dealing with lasers. Yeah, lasers. I'm going to show you how to make a procedural laser that not only uh, you can customize the shape, the color, whatever, but it interacts with stuff. It doesn't like move through objects. It actually like points at it and intersects in some sense. Um, and it's dynamic in the sense of you can move objects in your scene. You can have an animated object intersect with this thing. It's kind of the all purpose general laser pointer, if you want to think about it that way, but you could do more than one laser. So now that I've introduced it, do you, do you want to make lasers with me? I know you do. Let's get it. Okay, so lasers. Here's the setup I'm going to do. It's entirely geometry nodes. Um, you have a bunch of nodes, but what really matters is everything kind of boils down to the single node uh, that is just going to define a direction. So you can see I'm moving it on the x-axis kind of rotationally. And you can see it's doing the intersection properly. Here's the torus, whatever. I can move it on the y-axis, the z-axis. I don't, I don't think I want to, you know, do the demo anymore. I think we should just get to it. And by the way, there is a, a dot at the at the end of it. So you could have like a green dot there uh, being different from the laser, or you can make both the laser and the thing green. OK, let's 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 do it. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We are, first of all, going to make a scene that, you know, the stuff intersects with. And then we're going to make the laser uh, for the scene. Something super basic. I'm just going to set up basically the same thing I did last time. So here are some walls that we want to make sure that, you know, this thing has something to collide with. Uh, let's also add a donut. Doesn't need to be on the floor or anything. And let's also add a cylinder. OK, this is our scene. And I'm going to take all of these objects, hit M once I've selected them all. M is going to move them to a new collection. I'm going to call these objects. OK, the only other thing we need to do is make our laser pointer. So let's make a cylinder. That cylinder should be very, very tiny as if it's like to scale. Although it doesn't really matter because the shape of this isn't actually. Let's move it somewhere where I can see it doesn't actually affect the laser. But just so you can understand. OK, we have a laser pointer. Let's get it. So take this into geometry nodes, make a geo nodes group. What I'm going to do is I want this object to have some rotation. So I'm pointing it somewhere. I'm rotating it like using my wrist and my hand. And that is going to indicate which way the laser is facing. And then if we know which way the laser is facing, we can find where it intersects the thing. That's the whole idea. Long story short, we need a laser coming out of the top of this like a lightsaber. To do this, I'm going to use a curve. That's going to be apparent to why in a moment. Uh, but curves give us more nodes to work with than a mesh line. Take these, combine them. Now you can see we have a curve, um, curve line on top of this where I can control the height of it. And really, the question is, you know, how do I pick the height such that it intersects? And how do we do the rotation and all this? Uh, but before we get to that, let's make sure our first endpoint, which if you kind of look inside, it's halfway through our cylinder. Doesn't need to be that way. I'm just going to move it so it's slightly uh, beneath. OK, so we have this. Uh, now let's work on rotating the thing uh, to rotate it. Obviously, you transform it, you rotate it on the Y, you know, the Z, whatever. Uh, but I don't want to just put in rotation numbers because uh, we're going to be using something called a ray cast, which says cast a ray. Find out how far the laser pointer goes in a certain direction, not a rotation, a direction. So I want to make sure my rotation is in terms of some kind of direction kind of function, right? So this is going to be our direction. And then we need to convert it into a rotation. So again, what did I just say? We're not doing a raw rotation. I'm starting off with the direction and just converting it. Uh, the way you do that is you take your direction, use it in this align Euler to vector, which converts it into a rotation. And you're going to see, I think we have to set this to Z, uh, but you're going to see uh, when this has only an X component, it faces exactly, this is the X direction, right on the X. If I add a bit of contribution from the Y, it's going to start pivoting, as you'd expect. Although it is a bit weird in the sense of uh, these are, it's weird because to get this to keep rotating, you now have to go negative on the X. So it's facing the negative X direction. Uh, it's kind of like rotation angles, but you, it's intuitive once you get it. Z goes up and down, whatever. Again, the idea is this uh, this uh, column vector is just going to tell us the direction that we are pointing it in. So let me just point it towards the uh, torus roughly uh, so that we can get some intersection or maybe it's going at the cylinder. That's fine. And now uh, let's make the 
laser go the distance that it has to go, right? Now I could just kind of increase this, but you're seeing it's gonna hit the cylinder, but then there's nothing stopping it from kind of going through, right? We need to know exactly the distance. Uh, to do this, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a ray cast. Ray cast, again, casts a ray, tell us, tells us the hit position or the hit distance. Both of these are equally useful. I think we're just gonna use hit position because then we can map uh, the end point of the curve to where it's supposed to be sent to. Okay, so what are we casting on? What are we trying to find the intersection with? Well, it's our collection of stuff. So with the collection info node, just import in your objects. Two important things, set this to relative. This puts them in the correct uh, position in space relative to the collection. Set it to relative, okay? And the second thing is if I view this now, you're gonna see it's all one instance if we look into the data. We don't want this, we want actual geometry, I'm pretty sure. So I'm sending it through a realize instances node, which just kind of takes it and makes it raw data. I think this is necessary because we need that raw data to find where the intersection is. So again, this is what we're casting to. This is our target geometry. The ray direction would have been difficult if we had a rotation, but we don't, we have a direction. Plug that in there. And now we want to say, uh, take this hit position and map the tip of this uh, laser to it. So how do we do that? Well, what you might try to do, which is incorrect, is you might try a set position. We want to reset the position of the curve point. And you're like, oh, send it to where it hits. What's going to happen? Think about it. It's going to send the entire mesh. It's kind of doing it correctly. It's projecting in that direction, but it's sending the entire thing there because we didn't specify what it is that we want to send. But you can see it's kind of, you can almost imagine the laser kind of doing its thing. And you can see it doesn't go through meshes anymore. It kind of wraps around them nicely. Uh, but we somehow need to specify our selection. You could either do this in a fancy way. Um, I wouldn't recommend this. You could either use the endpoints, which is only uh, relative to a curve. So if I do something like this, now you can see it's doing exactly what we want, although it is doing some weird stuff over there. So you could do it like that. Um, that works. Uh, what I recommend is kind of simplifying it a bit instead. So what I'm going to do is instead of one transform, I'm just going to separate this into two operations, right? One is for our laser pointer, just the cylinder. And then the other one is going to be for our curve, what we care about. What do we want to set position of? The curve. And then we're going to join these at the end. So it's a bit subtle what I did here. I separated the cylinder, the laser pointer which is just getting joined. And then we have the curve, which has all this math done to it. Again, we don't see it because it's sending both uh, endpoints of the curve. So we could either use that endpoint node or use indexing because we know the curve has two points, right? Two control points, index zero and one. So I'm just gonna find the one of index one, the further endpoint. So we see where the thing is equal to one. I know we're getting in the weeds here, but that's this is what needs to be done for the laser. Okay. So what do we have so far? It looks, looks okay. Uh, the, the reason that <laughs> it looks incorrect um, is because the rotation hasn't been applied to both of these, so make sure you have rotation on both. And there we go. So you could see, what have we done here? We created a, I mean, this is kind of the core logic behind it. The rest of it is making it look good. But uh, this is the core logic be behind the laser pointer. So we have some rotation or some direction that we turn into rotation that's gonna turn both our curve and our laser pointer cylinder. And then for the uh, curve, we're saying take the index one, right, the second endpoint, and send it to, send it to uh, the ray casted position. Okay, so now really all we care about is uh, dealing with the uh, curve before this join geometry. So we wanna give it thickness so we can see it, give it color, randomization, stuff like this. So first of all, to turn it into a mesh, curve to mesh, what do we wanna kind of, lathe it with or sweep it with probably lathe is incorrect uh you want to use a circle or you could use any shape really but i find a circle is cool it'd be interesting if you did like a laser star if you wanted to right you could do any uh, shape any profile uh just take it and bring down the radius until it's as thin as your laser uh, should be now as you've probably seen in real life usually it's invisible but if you do see it like you spray some vapor some mist in the air the thing is very very thin so even this is a bit overkill but we'll make it even thinner so make it thin next is i don't want it to be just kind of this it almost looks like a long cylinder with some logic applied to it 
I want it to look more dynamic, more alive, and this is where we can do this procedurally, right? Because if we take it, we resample the curve. So all I'm doing is I'm adding more points to it. So instead of one endpoint and a second one, we do that, and then we add like, I don't know, 200 points. And the reason I'm doing this is because now I want to have each point have a different thickness along the thing, right? So if I now set the curve radius, which is again, the thickness of it, we don't have to do it for the same thing for every point, but instead we randomize the value. And you can see exactly what this does. It gives us this kind of, a little hard to tell, but uh, it gives us this pulsing thing. The resolution or density of that is directly dependent on how many points we have. Now, of course, those of you paying attention will realize that at some points our laser is shorter, like when it intersects an object. It's shorter, and sometimes it's longer, and this gets uh, way more intense when the laser is like barely making it far enough, and now we have all these points kind of crammed in. So uh, the idea is instead of having like 300 points or 200 points no matter what, uh, let's make it dependent on the length of it. So this way it's dynamic in that sense too. So it's going to adjust and uh, create the same density uh, no matter where it is. And you can really see this laser is uh, working, uh, which I think is very cool. Um, okay, so we have this. Uh, another thing we can do is the seed value. The seed value of the... Would it be easier in rendered mode? Yeah, you can see it better. Uh, the seed value of our randomization is basically... Where is it? It's going to give us different distributions. A little hard to tell. But if we take this and now make it dependent on the frame number, so scene time, the frame, it's going to change literally every frame. If I zoom in, you can see it's pulsing. And this is what's going to give us a dynamic look, especially once this is emitting red or green, it's going to change the emission pattern. Um, by the way, it shouldn't go down to zero, something like 0.1. Okay, so we have this thing that's flickering. Let's give it some materials and see what it looks like. So I'm going to make one material for the collection. Not the collection. I guess this is the laser pointer, uh, which is going to have the same material as the collection. One for that, one for the laser. Let's assign the default material. And for the laser, uh, we're basically just going to make an emission, right? But what I want to do is make, what I want to do is make a new material. I'm going to call it laser. Let's uh, make sure we can view that and make sure that it's going in here such that when we change the color, it's affecting our laser. Yay. Uh, don't make it red. It's going to look stupid. Um, instead, what you want to do is take the emission, make that red or green or whatever, and then bring up the strength by like a lot, like 50, 100, 200. Um, if, if for Eevee, you want to make sure you have Bloom enabled. Uh, I don't recommend using Eevee for this. You could, but where it really turns cool is if you use Cycles. Because this way, it still looks like this bright thing. And let me use my denoiser. It still looks like this bright thing, but when you crank up the emission way more, you can see it's actually like glowing the area where it's intersecting. Let's shade smooth that. And uh, for this one, we got to make sure it's normals. Um, but you could see it's actually glowing on the thing. And it looks more like hot and bright and physically accurate. If I make it insane, you could really see it's even emitting the space uh, or illuminating the space. Another thing we can do is if you really want this area to be concentrated, and this is what I was hinting at before, is we could add another section to our laser that just has a sphere or something at the very tip. Let's do that. So I'm going to use the laser material. Uh, I want to instance a sphere or a cube or whatever. This isn't physically accurate anymore, what I'm about to do, but it looks good. So I'm going to instance a point. Um, I want to instance a sphere is what I meant. I'm going to instance a sphere where on the curve, but before we give it like 200 points or whatever, right? So the set position version, uh, what this is going to do is when we join it, is now you're going to see we have a sphere here and a sphere here, because again, we have two endpoints of the curve. Uh, I just want to do it for index equal to 1, so at the end point, and then make the radius tiny. But you could see, like, the emission kind of has, like, double the emphasis when you do it like this. So you could pick the size, and in fact, uh, what I was showing you earlier is if you make two materials for this, you could even make it, like, a different color. Like, this could be a green thing, which kind of combines to yellow uh, with the light thing. Uh, but the reason you might want to do two of these is you might want the emission of the end point to be super bright, as you can see. Um, but again, the cool thing that now you can see in cycles is this is flickering, uh, which is giving this more of a dynamic look. And additionally, additionally, remember, all of this is dependent on a single 
vector. So it looks like we're slicing through objects. Now, if we had a loop node or something, I guess you could use dynamic paint. Uh, what you could do is you could go like this and kind of map what areas it intersects with. And using that, you could make a charred map, kind of, like where it's passed through and you could have it burned, but whatever. Uh, I feel like this is the essence of it, right? There, there's more stuff you could do, uh, like adding extra lasers. But I think in terms of the laser pointer, it looks pretty realistic in my eyes. So I'm thinking let's wrap it up. How long? 15 minutes. Might be a bit lengthy, but whatever. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, at the end, I like to pimp out my Patreon. But listen, don't leave yet. Uh, there is things that you might want from the Patreon. So uh, there's a link in the description. If you click it, there are three benefits you get from being a patron. And there's 750 of you. Thank you. First of all, you get early access to tutorials. I upload the tutorials before you see them. And patrons get to see it usually a day earlier. Um, the second thing they get is a blend file. So you don't need to make this laser pointer. I'm going to upload the blend file. Yesterday, I made the Oreo. The day before that, I made the companion cube. Hundreds of blend files you can download immediately like that. And project files too. Third, you get exclusive tutorials. Those are bonus videos I make every once in a while. There's probably more than a dozen at this point. Uh, those tend to be longer and in-depth, and you can check those out. So when you become a patron, get access to these three things. It is also the best way, and I mean this, the best way uh, to fund or support this channel and the CG Matter one. If you want to keep these tutorials free, it is literally the best way to do it, ironically. To keep it free, somebody has to pay. But um. I appreciate all the active patrons. Uh, thank you, whether or not you're a patron, for making it to the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned something about lasers, and that is it.